Let us see how SAT solvers work. We will first study a method called DPLL, which is uh, abbreviation of uh, four sign tests. This method takes a CNF formula as input. In this method, we will assign a var uh, variables one after another, and therefore, uh, we need a concept of partial assignment. It means that not all variables are assigned in some given moment of the algorithm. And some variables are assigned true or false, and some variables are remain unassigned. Under a partial mo a model, we can say a literal is true if literal can be evaluated to one in that model. We say a literal is false if the literal is evaluated under that model to be zero. In otherwise, we call the literal unassigned. Similarly, we extend this definition for clauses. A clause is true if there is a literal L such that L is true. Okay? If any of the literal becomes true in a clause, then the clause is true. However, to make a clause false, you need to show that all the literals in the clause are false. Okay? Otherwise, we call the clauses unassigned. Now, we further extend this definition for formulas. A formula is true if all clauses in the formula are true. If a, a clause is considered false, if there is one clause, okay, there is some clause such that this clause is false. Otherwise, we call the formula unassigned. We need one more definition, which is very important definition, which is called unit clauses. What is a unit clause? Under some partial assignment M, a clause is called unit clause if there is exactly one literal that is unassigned and all others are false. Let's suppose you have a clause which has a literal, let's say P or not Q or R, and let's suppose these two literals are false under your model, then we have to assign this literal true because otherwise this clause will become false. So in this situation, we call this clause unit clause and this literal a unit literal. DPLL initially assigns no variable any value and slowly builds the model. Then it assigns randomly uh, values 0 and 1 to unassigned variables. Sometimes this algorithm is forced to choose assignment for some variable if some some literal becomes unit. Uh, let's look at the method in, a, in an algorithmic sense. Let's suppose we first we give a formula f then we call a recursive function dpll which takes two parameters uh, some point of time you call this function with uh, with uh, formula f and initial partial assignment in which they have assigned no value to any variable then you execute the function recursively which slowly expands m okay how does it do it uh, so some point of time it will what it will do it will choose an unassigned variable p and assign a random bit p to it okay? and call the formula recursively. This notation says that take the current partial assignment and extend it by assigning p to b and then you call this dpl recursively again. If this function returns sat then you say oh this is a satisfiability and you return sat. If that does not happen something else happens then you flip the choice you switch from b to 1 minus b and call the function recursively again. So how a DPL is going to return SAT? So that's the base case. Okay. So these are the base cases. Okay. So, so what happens is that formula F ultimately becomes true under partial modeling. Basically all clauses become true under this model. Then you say, oh, we have found a satisfying assignment and then you return SAT. If under the uh, partial model uh, any clause becomes false and that's only you can say a formula is false then you return unsat and that will happen you know when that, that situation unsat will come out here and you have to jump here and again if unsat comes out here then you, you basically return unsat and then you go to higher level returning unsat okay so uh, then there's a gap here that's where something interesting happens sometimes uh, you have to do unit propagation. What is unit propagation? Somewhere there is a clause 
where a, a, a literal p becomes a unit letter. Now, since it's a unit literal, it has to be made true, so therefore you assign p to 1. Okay? And then you call the DPLL again. Or if some literal not p becomes uh, unit literal, then it has to be p has, p has to be assigned for 0 such that you can make this literal true. And then you call the DPLL recursively again. Okay, that's the most interesting part of the DPL algorithm. So this step, when you have an assignment and you find unsatisfiability, it doesn't mean the formula is unsatisfiable. It means that particular partial assignment doesn't work. So you need to undo your decisions at this at this point and uh, flip your decisions. So that's we call backtracking. And this step, when you uh, randomly choose a bit, which we call decisions. And uh, this step, when you are forced to make an assignment, is called unit propagation. So what is how DPLL proceeds? It makes a few decisions. As soon as it starts making decisions, it is sometimes forced to make unit propagation. Some point of time, it, it discovers conflicts. Then it has to backtrack. And then when it backtracks and go to a point, flips its decision, and move on to the other unit propagation. Let's look at an example and it will give you a better sense. In the first uh, first view, you will think that uh, this algorithm must be exponential, very expensive, and always run the worst behavior. But, but unit propagation is your friend and you'll be surprised how often it kicks in. Okay, So let's look at this example. Okay, So th this has us eight clauses and about seven variables, P1 to P7. So let's suppose uh, you assign a variable to p, uh, p6 first, and this is a random choice. I mean, I'm not assigning p1, I'm just picking a random variable assigned a random bit. So I assigned it p0, okay, p6 to be 0. Now what happens is, look at this, as soon as p6 becomes 0, you, if you look around, you will find that the p6 occurs here. Since p6 has become 0 here, this has become a a unit literal and therefore you need to assign p5 to be 0 and we also write down the reason here I mean, why am I forced like the clause c8 is causing this to become 0 now let's move on now what is the situation now the p6 is 0 and p5 is 0 so for example you look around p5 if this has become 0 and uh, anywhere else p5 occurs here it has become 0 and it looks like uh, there is no no further uh, help out there because of p5. Uh, so we need to make another decision. Let's suppose we assign p7 to be zero. Okay, p7 occurs here, and it's a lone occurrence. Okay, though nowhere else it occurs. We assign it to zero, but it doesn't really help this clause. The both of these literals are unassigned, so really we don't know uh, what to do here. So we need to make another decision. So let's make another decision. We well, let's assign p1 to be one. As soon as we assign p1 to be 1, what happens? This clause becomes true. Okay. Once a clause becomes true, it's sort of disabled. We need to ignore it. What is going on in the clause is, is not important anymore. And this is the, the, the second clause which has become true now. Now, what happens? Do we have a unit propagation anywhere? So, what happens is that look at C2. Okay. In C2, uh, we have p1 which was uh, already set to 1, so this had become 0, false. P3 was not false, but P5 was already set to false. Therefore, this guy has become a unit literal. Therefore, I have to set it to 1. So now these clauses are becoming true. So we don't have to worry about the true clauses anymore. Which The clauses which are not true yet, we have to think over about them. So there are four clauses. So what further we can do? Uh, we can propagate P2 because of C1. Look at the C1 clause. Here you have, uh, this literal has become false. Therefore, P2 is has to be made true. Now we continue. And now what happens is uh, we need to assign, because of the clause C3, uh, we need to assign uh, P4 to be 1. Now we carry on. And what happens is, this, look at this clause, P3 is 1 and P4, both are 1 and this is a conflict. I cannot 
uh, this uh, because of this assignment I have reached to a conflict I have made three decisions in this execution one two and three what do we need to do we need to backtrack our algorithm will backtrack and flips the last decision it just makes the p1 from one to zero and moves on the algorithm so algorithm how it proceeds it makes few decisions pushes uh, does the unit propagation and some point of time it sees a conflict and then backtracks that is the essence of dpl so what's so good about dpll i mean it looks very simple algorithm and it has a one important idea unit propagation but it doesn't deserve to be very glorified and you know it seems obvious enough however there is an important factor here this algorithm lends itself to a lot of optimizations and it has been exploited one of the most important optimization has been closet learning in the next video we will study this optimization in great detail